Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today, Marcella and I are going to answer a viewer's question. Silk wrote in on the forum. She said, I really appreciate the Christmas gift you gave us by letting us have access to the chair barrel workshop. I learned throughout the work that you often cue the sits bones to stay wide and avoid gripping around the sits bones. So should there always be no gripping around the sits bones, also doing swan or bridging, etc.? This is an excellent question that Silk asked, and I think all of us kind of struggle a little bit with um, uh, what we do with and around the sitting bones in certain positions. A lot of times we'll see people um, initiate pretty much every exercise with a squeeze or sort of a prepare around the bottom of the pelvis. And that really isn't necessary um, for almost any exercise that we would do, especially for people in our culture who are very stressed out, sitting a lot of, uh, most of the time, and not really on their feet and moving their hips in all sorts of different directions. So for our clientele, on the most part, we want to cue in all different positions that they find as much space and softness around their sitting bones as possible. Now, that does not necessarily mean that the glutes are all the way off. Right? It depends on what exercise you're doing. But if you prepare right away with a, a squeeze of the glute, then you've really blocked a lot of the um, bone rhythms and the natural synchronization of how the muscles should um, layer in contraction. All right, so let's look at two very different positions and how we would cue the, the pelvis. So Marcella is going to come up here into an extended um, knee stretch. And so Marcella doesn't have a lot of flexibility in her ankles, which is going to hinder her keeping the position of her pelvis. So I just have one mat here right now, and I want, I want you to see the difference. So we're going to put, we're going to give her, yeah, you can step off. We're going to give her three under her knees, and this is going to really help with her ankle mobility and it's gonna give her a lot more comfort and options in her pelvis. All right, so lift the bunny tail up. Make sure you have your deep abdominals on. Bring your behind back, and now lift your eyes and chest. So I want you to push into the bar so your shoulder blades stay apart. Yes, good. It's like you're sending the back of your heart back here, good. Now, can you keep that shell? Can you keep the angle of where your lumbar spine is? So don't let your lumbar spine change. And imagine with your breath that you're blooming the sitting bones to the sides of the room and up towards the ceiling. So you have to find more drawing in of your deep belly and don't lose the reach of your arms into the bar. Now keep all of this and from her leg, she's gonna inhale and press out just a little bit. And on the exhale, the knees come in, the lumbar our spine remains the same and we have this really wide sitting bone position. Do a couple more. Inhale, swing out. Exhale as the knees come in. I want her to feel like her sitting bones bloom even more. Keep going. And so while cueing the pelvic floor into contraction, while the, the bones of the pelvis are wide, that is bringing more awareness to the brain of that sensation in the pelvic floor. All right, good. Now let's look at a totally different position. So Chell, you're going to come down onto your belly, onto the mat here, and she's going to put the very front crease of her hip right at the, the end of the blanket there. And that is going to give her a lot more options of relaxing the sacrum, relaxing the tail down between the legs. Now I'm going to have Chell have a little bit of room between her legs and she has a really nice parallel position here. So she's open in the whole front of the leg and ankle. Now another thing because of her ankle mobility that I'd really like to do, because this is going to help with the pelvis, is Chell bend your knees for a second. Yep, 
and then we're going to come down and we're just going to give her a little bit of support at the front of her ankles. All right, so she's going to do a small swan. So on her exhale, I want her to push into the floor and open the chest and bring the eyes forward. Good. Now from here, lengthen the back of your neck and Chell, you can go back down again. Great. So now what I want Chell to do on this second time around is as you start to exhale and bring the eyes and chest up, think more about your deep abdominals. Feel like you're dragging the floor back towards you. Good, now see if you can soften around your sitting bones. Let your tail drop down between your legs. Imagine your upper inner thigh, that's good, nice. Upper inner thighs are moving to the ceiling and then gently go back down. All right, now on this third time, I want you to use a little bit more activation in your upper body. So spread your fingers, reach into the thumb, first finger. Exhale, imagine you're trying to drag the mat back towards you. Now don't lose the work in your upper body. Lengthen the back of your neck, great. And then exhale, gently coming back down. That's it for today. If you have an observation or a question that you'd like to see answered in an upcoming episode, Comment below, on Facebook, Twitter, or the forum on our site. See you next time. And never stop learning.